Come on, Isaac. Come on, Isaac. Isaac. Come on, Isaac. Come on, Isaac. Awesome. Well, hello, no, men of the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, Let's go, Isaac. Great to see you guys here. I'm excited to be able to preach a short charge for you guys. Uh, my my the, the charge I was given was a faithful man of prayer and the word. Uh, you know, I was actually really inspired go, uh, with my with one of my first point for actually Earl Jones's lesson about knowing your role. Uh, he really inspired the, my point title here that I'm about to give you guys. Uh, it reminded me of another person actually that was born Hayward when it came to knowing your hey. role. And uh, let's see if you can guess who it is. Your roll, know it. Your mouth, shut it. If you smell, ah! let's go. What the rock? Let's, let's go, go. rock is the game. Oh. Let's go, go Isaac. Isaac. Come on, I, I, and I love that we can Come on, Isaac. Go, bro. That's the go. Know your role. Shut your mouth. My lesson here. Uh, know your role. Come on. Fine. Quiet time. Come on, bro. Uh, turn with me over here to Joshua chapter three. Come on, Isaac. Let's go, bro. And, uh, Joshua go, chapter bro. three, five through nine. Let's go, Isaac. Come on, uh, Isaac. Joshua told the people, there. Pray yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Joshua said to the priest, take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on ahead of the people. So he took it up and went ahead of them. And the Lord said to Joshua, today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel, so they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Tell the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the edge of Jordan's waters, go and stand in the river. Joshua said to the Israelites, come here and listen to the words of the Lord, your God. Yeah, you know, I love this passage here. You know, he starts off right there. He says, uh, actually, right before this, they actually camped out for three days. You know, Joshua was just having his time with God. God was talking to Joshua. Uh, he was getting them ready to go and uh, cross over into the promised land. And the first thing he said, hey, consecrate yourself. You know, he said, hey, set yourself apart. Get clean. You know, if you're going to have amazing times with God, you got to get open. Man, some of us here in this call, we have some sin that is weighing us down. You know, we started the new year super fired up and fresh to go after repenting and all these things. And maybe you've stumbled. Let me tell you, you got to get clean. You got to get open. You got to walk in the light to make sure you can miracles can happen. You know, and that also means that they wash themselves. Some of, some of us here just need to take showers. Whoa! Uh, you know, I, I know whoa. it's quarantine. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Take some showers. Hold on, out, bro. Okay, oh, five like days without showering, wow. uh, reusing the same boxers. You know, maybe you're trying to go inside. You know, flip them inside out. Oh my gosh! Oh, Come on, bro. Let, let, me, let me tell you guys. You know, oh, when you clean know. yourself, you know, you feel better. You, it helps you have a good time uh, yes. with God here. Oh, uh, bro. You know, and then he tells the, the Levites, "Hey, you guys are gonna lead the way with the ark." Uh, and let me tell you guys, if miracles are going to happen, God has to go first. We're going to drop down to verse 14. In verse 14, it reads, So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is at flood stage, all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the Ark re reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from the upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the, the vicinity of Zarethan. While the water flowing down, the, down to the Sea of the Erebah was completely cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan, while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry land. Wow. Now, I really, I, I love this passage here. It says that the priests, you know, they get to that water's edge. And the Bible makes sure to pause there because it's going to be nothing that the men do here. It's not going to be from men. But God is about to work uh, because of the time that they spent with him. And usually this uh, Jordan River is about 100 uh, feet wide. But here during flood season, it's double that. It's 200 feet wide. And, uh, you know, I love this passage. It says that the water was stopped at a town called Adam. Uh, you know, symbolizing since the times of Adam, God always had a plan to rescue his people. Which is funny because the Jordan actually symbolized death. It actually pours out into the Dead Sea. And uh, just like the Israelites crossed over the Jordan, a symbol for death, into the promised land, you know, Jesus overcame death to help give us our eternal promised land. And uh, now we get to do that for many people. And, you know, again, I love earlier in this passage, it says that the ark went ahead of them about a thousand yards. Uh, and we know that the ark usually resided in the temple. 
uh, behind the curtain in the most holiest of holy places. This was the exact place where the spirit, the essence of God resided. And the Israelites knew if a miracle was going to happen, God had to go first. He had to lead the way. And when we have our quiet times, that's exactly what we do. We are sending God to lead the way in the many different areas that we want to see happen. Come on, bro. First rule. Come on, Isaiah. Come on, bro. What's in the ark? You got two stone, two, two stone tablets, so the Ten Commandments. Uh, there's manna, which fed the Israelites. You know, Aaron's staff, which he used, obviously, as a shepherd to, like, make sure the sheep weren't getting too crazy. Sometimes you got to hit the sheep, you know, a little more. I think some of us know what we're talking about when we say that, amen. Uh, you know, Joshua knew hit the sheep. that if this was going to work, had to go first. You know, for us today, you know, we are that royal priesthood. The Holy Spirit resides in us. You know, we read our stone tablets, our word of God, amen. Uh, you know, we get fed from John 4, 34, that the food of us, we don't need manna. We got the word right here. And we use this thing to shepherd God's people. And this is, this is exactly like when you have a crank and quiet time, you are making sure that God is going ahead of you. And it's going to help you save many souls so they can overcome their sin that would lead them to death. You know, but what happens to us? Why doesn't that happen more often? Uh, well, here, let me tell you guys. Your bed is too comfortable. Uh, that alarm clock goes off and you don't wake oh, up. Oh, call it out, bro. This pillow is too comfortable. Oh! It's too oh, cold. No. I don't want to get up. Well, Come on, wait a blanket. Like, you actually wake up to the alarm, right? And, but you decide not to move. I'm going to have my quiet time right here in bed or on the couch. You, know, you start praying or you start reading. Those eyelids get heavy and you go to sleep. Keep it real, bro. You know, you're not letting God go to work before you. You know, or sometimes, you know, school can get started. We get too hectic. Like, oh, my gosh, I got so many assignments. What am I going to do? Uh, and the first thing to go are times with God. Work gets crazy. First thing to go, times with God. You know, you fall out of your routine because brothers are driving you crazy. First thing to go, times with God. Well, I'm here, man, to tell you guys that we have to get up, get out, know your role, and have a divine, quiet time with our God. And that's my charge for you guys. Love you. Let's go, Isaac. Come on, Isaac. 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 I can smell what you're cooking from here, baby. Jay. 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 You better let him know, Jay. All let right, him know. Right. Well, good afternoon, good afternoon. 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 It's super incredible. Uh, this afternoon, my charge for you guys this afternoon is faithful, man, and fruitfulness. If you can turn over to John chapter 4. Come Let's go, Pastor. Lay it out. All right, we're going to start here in verse 32. All right. And the scripture says, it says, but he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Amen. Yeah. Then his disciples said to each other, could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Don't you have a saying it's still four months until the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now, the one who reaps draws a wage and, and a harvest a crop for eternal life. So that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps, is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work, and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. Right? And so my first point for you guys is get hungry for fruit. Not hungry. Get hungry for Talk fruit. Amen? Right here in this passage, okay. after you have to eat something, Jesus says here that his food was to do the will of God. It wasn't water burger. It wasn't in and out. It wasn't even Texas barbecue. But it was Whoa. to do Ooh. the will of God. Amen. My it, it's what sustained him. It's what drove him. And it's what kept him going each and every day. Now in verse 35, it talks about how the, the harvest is now, right? In which we understand there are people out there right now ready for us to meet them, study with them, and baptize them. These people, they're on Instagram. They're on, they're on Facebook. They're even on YouTube. I don't know if you guys know, you can share your faith on YouTube right there, right? They're at the mall. They're at the grocery right. store. And what we understand is that they're out there. We just have to make a decision to go out there and get them, right? Now, in verse 37, Jesus helps us understand, and I really want to encourage you guys with the word of God right here. The Bible says that the hard work is done, right? And I don't know if you guys remember uh, Acts chapter 17, 26 through 28, and a seeking God study. 
where we teach about how the Holy Spirit is setting up the times and places for the people that we're going to meet. What we have to do, we just have to make a decision to make sure that we're actually working and that we're hungry to see souls saved and have faith that the Holy Spirit is going to guide us to these individuals. Amen? Come on, bro. Now, Amen. Which is interesting, right? statistically, right, the most faithful thing men are faithful to is not God, right? Mm -hmm. It's not their mm -hmm. wives. It's not even themselves, right? Oh. But the main thing that men are faithful to is food, right? Talk about now, it. faith in the Hebrew is a... Uh, uh, imuna, which means to take firm action in which we understand men love to take firm action when they hungry and they want food but as men of God yep. they're called to take firm action and on the will of God mm. now the reason why Fire. men are so faithful to food is because as men hey we, we, we're always hungry right there right and I know for me always. one of the oh, things that I love doing is I, I love oh, you food. know going to people's houses and you know, open up the refrigerator to see what's in the Absolutely. kitchen. Absolutely. And if they don't want to feed me, I'll right. take my food. Oh, yeah. Food. Come on, bro. They right don't claim that any of their possessions were their own, but they shared everything that they had and they gave me some food right there, right? <laughs> now, <laughs> I know Jeremiah, he pointed out that here in California that everyone's a, you know, a vegan and everyone's a vegetarian. And it's funny because, you know, I'm from Texas, but I just went vegetarian, amen. No, you know, all things to all people. Are you a real Texan right there? And they're like, oh, they're they're come over any time. And I, I respond, well, I like, hey, you know, we, we eat the same things you guys do. We just don't eat meat. You know, we're vegetarians, right? But overall, in Texas, it's true. In Texas, everybody in Texas is on that seafood diet, right? Not seafood like lobsters and fish, but seafood where you see food and you go and eat it, right? <laughs> but I think it's time for us as men to go in and eat it spiritually, right? Where we see people, and it doesn't matter who it is, it doesn't matter what they look like, it doesn't matter how sharp, how big, how tall, how small they are. We share our faith, we follow up, we study the Bible, Anthony, with them, so they can have Come the same on. opportunity we had to get oh, yeah. ourselves saved. And get their sins forgiven and dwell in the house of God forever. Are you guys with me? Come on, Jay! Come on, Jay! Come on! Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. We understand in the scriptures, right? Jesus Christ, he had a diet. And Jesus, his diet, his diet was baptisms because he was always hungry. To there see it souls is. Saved. And it's time Come for on. us to get on that same diet where we're always hungry to see souls saved and, and men getting baptized. Come and, on. you know, I think in a real way, in order to take this church to the next level, in order to have more fruit than ever before, I think it's going to start right here with the men on this call. And I know Jason said fruit for everyone, right, in 2021. But, you know, as, as brothers, you know, we usually wear suits. And so I want to challenge us to let, let's let's make it our goal to not only have fruit for everyone in 2021, but let's, let, let's make it our goal to go after wet sleeves. For every brother, hey, come, come on, come on, Jay. Come on, bro. Let's be faithful men in fruitfulness, and to God be all the glory. Let's go, come on, go, Sunday. Let's go, Nick. Let's go, Nick. Come on, come on, Nick. I respect you. Let's go, Nick. Thanks, all people. Really come into the the culture here in the Bay Area. I'll pray for you. You know, with your with your new diet there, bro. But uh, uh, for me, my, my point that I've been given to preach about was a faithful man in leadership. If you guys will turn with me to on, chapter four, I have one Thanks, point bro. for you guys today. Only the selfless will move mountains, right? Here in Philippians chapter four, we're going to look in verse 12. The Bible says, I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in wants. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. You know, this is, uh, honestly, this is one of my favorite epistles. This is a really awesome epistle. Um, Paul is writing this back to the church in Philippi, right? And this is right after he had actually received what we call special missions, the church in Philippi was one of the churches that would uh, commonly send Paul funds, right? So Paul receives some funds from Philippi, and he sends a letter back to the church. We call it the Book of Philippians. It's really a letter, right? Come on, bro. But 
it's interesting when you when you read this in context, um, Paul, he, he uh, it's very interesting if you were to read this whole passage from verse 10 all the way to verse 19, because uh, he points out to the church in Philippi that the, the funds, they came a little late, right? And he's thinking of them. Verse 10, it starts in verse 10 and it ends the whole book in verse 23, right? But it's the thank you part of the letter where he's thanking them for the money that he had received. But he lets them know that the money came a little too late, right? That he was in need many times. It says in verse 12, I know what it is to be in need. I know it is to have plenty. I learned the, I learned to be content while I, whether I'm well fed or hungry, right? You know, and for me, on, I really read this and it convicted me because what Paul's really saying, on, bro. thanking them, yes, for the money, but he's thanking them for the lesson that he learned in the meantime when Come he on, didn't have funds. Paul learned the secret of selflessness right here. Okay. Right. Because for me, I, I got baptized in 2017 spring. Wow. And probably not even a month after I got baptized, I remember going up to uh, Jason Dimitri one day after a staff meeting, right? And I told him my big dream to become an evangelist one day. Go ahead, Nick. Right? So that's spring of 2017. Fall of 2018, I become a Bible talk leader, right? Um, wow. Jason told me, he gave me one piece of advice when I talked to him. He was like, okay, well, you need to become a Bible talk leader and be fruitful. And I was like, okay, well, I'm not really sure what a Bible talk leader is. And, you know, being fruitful, I think that's baptizing people. Okay, well, I'm going to go pray. <laughs> so I, I go up to the, the sixth floor of uh, the, my, my tower that I lived in in partner said right there across the street from Esther State, right? And, and I prayed this prayer to God. I said, God, I need you to, 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 to mold me. I need you to, to bend me, to, to break me and change me in whatever way you have to do to make me into a fruitful Bible talk leader. Strong yeah. move. Let's go. Some would say it's a strong move. Others would encourage you against praying prayers like that. Because right? uh, God won't answer those prayers. Let me tell you, God will answer those prayers. Your first right? mistake. So that spring of 2017, like I said, in fall of 2018, I've become a Bible talk leader, right? And um, I'm still a pretty worldly dude, if we're being honest. You can ask Matt. Um, I, was still, I was still a, a college athlete there at SSD. I was on the wrestling team, right? And um, about a year had gone by, and I had gotten so just, uh, just infatuated with just the kingdom, right? And just the structure of leadership and just seeing Bible talks move and seeing my teammates get baptized. It was just the coolest thing ever, right? Come on, bro. So when I became a Bible talk leader, I basically – translated all of like my really bad competitive traits from wrestling over to to the kingdom in a really terrible way right i didn't care about anything else other than raising up nothing else mattered you know and god really no over the last like three years right um because for someone with a competitive nature such as myself I didn't, I'm more of a, a results oriented person. Mm, come on, bro. Come on, bro. To really satisfy myself. Come on, get open, bro. Right? Satisfied, I need to see the results, right? But to this day, in 2021, I'm a Bible talk leader. I've been a Bible talk leader for almost four years, for almost on, four and a half years, right? On, Nick. So, oh. Not really seeing just the, what, what I wanted, the growth out of myself that I expected, right? It just, it just made me struggle in a lot of ways. Maybe get into a lot of sin, right? But the core of it is just really wicked selfishness. It's a terrible leader. Wow. Leadership would have destroyed on, me on, if I would have grew the way that I wanted to grow. It'd have been terrible, right? Wow. But Come on. God, God's gracious and he's patient, but the discipline was there. You know, um, over the, the last three years, I, I've had a lot of ups and downs, um, tanked a dating relationship, um, shrunk a Bible talk. Uh, nice. I got the, uh, the, oh, this one was good. The, the interest, it's not mutual, bro. That one sucks. Um, I got the two, right? Uh, and come on, dude. all of this, I, I look back on this and, and it kind of makes me laugh and I, I'm grateful. Oh, it. I can look back at these things and laugh about it because I've learned it. It's, it's not about me. This this life that I'm living is not about me, anyways. 
right? The, these hills and these valleys, they're, they're all just a cherry on top. At the end of the day, I'm going to go to heaven anyways. And I just need to have as many people behind me as possible, right? But, but brothers, if you guys want to be leaders, which all of us here should, I just have one piece of advice for you all. Just one Please. piece. Come on, bro. Come on. If you want Great. to read Bible talks or campuses, yeah, on, ministry, leadership at any capacity, be selfless. Come on, Nick. Come on. Just be selfless. Consider Let's others go, above yourself, right? Because let me tell you, the, the leaders in our church, they're not looking inside unfruitful Bible talks for new Bible talk leaders. <laughs> they're not looking at unfruitful campuses for new campus leaders. It's not what they're looking for, right? Come on, bro. And as us in Bible talks, not leading anything, we need to consider everyone in our Bible talks better than us, our leaders, right? For me, some of the greatest joys that I've experienced in these last four years was uh, being underneath Christian Enos, um, Nate Pavone, Matt Rodriguez, right? And seeing them raise up oh. and helping build ministries with them that are going to get them to achieve their calling. Seeing Nate and oh, Christian get appointed are two of the hugest joys I've ever experienced in my life. I've got one more. I got Matt. This is my personal goal to see him get a Come point. Come on, bro. The, whether we have a oh, or on, whatever conference we have in August. I think we get 20 baptisms this semester. He's going to get married. That, that's all we have left is to get that guy appointed. And that's my own personal oh, goal. Right there, bro. The glory that I get to have. Come I on. I take pride in that. Right? Come on, man. Because if that's our hearts, if we're selfless, we consider everyone around us Above on, ourselves, the lost, our family, our leaders, you will be the most fruitful disciple in your ministry. And you'll get what you want in the day. You'll become a leader. and It will be incredible. But Come you guys, on, if you guys want to move mountains in 2021, you must be selfless. To God be all the glory. Come on, Nick. Come on, Come on Nick. Come on, bro. Come on, Come on, Come on, Come on, Come on, afternoon. We're here to talk okay, about man, bro. moving purity. Whoa, that was really cool. Wow. That was on, bro. A quick uh, definition. Uh, Impurity is indulging in sexual thoughts. I became a disciple in art school in autumn 2009. And during my Bible studies, I came to a decision that my days of impurity, pornography, and masturbation were over. There is no one last time. And the same holds true for you. Your last time was your last come on bro time. come on come on bro that decision i quickly discovered four strategies that have helped come me on, to stay man. pure from pornography come on, bro. and masturbation this, bro. Come for on, all 11 years number one mind over matter come on Romans 12, verse two says do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind being converted in art school was interesting there is no shortage of naked people at art school, either the ones you're studying directly or in the artwork that you need to review and critique. It might sound like struggle central, but I will forever cherish it because it taught me an important concept. The way you orient your thoughts makes all the difference. Women in the world dress in certain ways to get guys thinking about them in certain ways. And you can choose what way your mind will react. At art school, it was time to work. And if you waste the time lusting instead of working, I'm gonna smack you upside the head and say, you're a professional, right? Grow up wow. and draw the shapes. Come and that's on. how I view people now, no matter it how they're dressed, dressed, just a collection of shapes. But wow. you don't have to enroll in a figure drawing wow, class that's really good. your mind. Just look at statistics. A huge percentage of women in pornographic content online got there by being sold into sex trafficking. Wow. They wow. are literal slaves held against their will to satisfy a $97 billion industry. And oh, you bro. feed into the men who put them there by giving into that filth. Put Come your on. mind in the proper place and grow up. Come on, Elliot. Oh, when you see a pretty girl wearing all the wrong clothes, don't look lustfully at her. But before you look away, take one moment and choose to see her with compassion. Come on, bro. She's Come a slave, on, bro. too. Come on, Elliot. When you alter the way you see things and practice a different way, you'll find that what used to tempt you has lost its luster. Point number two, give Come Satan on. a hand. 
your hand. Matthew 5.30 says, and if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. Identify the things that make you struggle and get rid of them. Come on, if you're not able man. to get rid of it, renew your mind about it. If you are, get rid of it. I spent one evening doing a fine tooth comb level scraping clean of all my search history, all my bookmarks, cookies, downloaded files, user Come profiles, on, bro. Come on, everything. Man. Hold Come on, nothing back. Man. And wow. when you're done, take another moment and reset your device's advertising ID. This is the little number that links your past with what advertisers present to you. Oh, Remember, man. Instagram is only Instagram when your search history makes it that way. Woo! Take ownership and take the time to baptize your electronics and give them a new beginning too. Come, Come on, bro. bro. Come on, bro. And, and hey, electronics. Don't give Satan a foothold. Proverbs 18 verse nine says, one who is slack in his work is brother to one who destroys. Don't let Satan destroy your purity. When you have downtime or are alone, stay focused and stay busy. Make it a lifestyle to look for things to do rather than just watching a movie or scrolling the internet that leads to impurity. Do your chores, work out, reach out to a brother to build a friendship, take a walk. Loving outward is a great way to take your focus off of loving inward. Mm. Have a healthy distraction when thoughts come your way, find something that interests you and keep it in your back pocket that you can pull it out whenever lustful thoughts try to enter. And when you do rest, do it with company that can keep you accountable. Preach, and number four, last, but I should hope not least, pray. Psalm 51 verse 10 says, create in me a pure heart, oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Come on, Ellie. Gentlemen, we need to pray and Beg God for help overcoming. Come on, bro. Don't pray for deliverance. Pray for strength. When you are tempted, don't pray about the temptation. Have people on your heart. Pray for the saving of souls. Pray for growth in our discipleship. Pray to excel in our relationships, in our jobs, in the church, in our expression of love outward. When we pray, God sends his angels to guide us in the way. Gentlemen. If we are going to move this mountain, we need to be absolute faithful men of absolute purity. I love you, and to God be the glory. That's all I'm talking about. That was powerful. Amen. That was awesome. This has been an awesome conference so far. Can everybody see me and hear me? Come on, Papa John. Got everybody. Oh, sure. 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 Clear, bro. And, um, you know, on, I feel bro. like this has been a GLC on steroids. Amen for these. these Come two. on, Dr. John. And, um, you know, our theme, of course, is Mountain Moving Faith. And uh, the title of my les lesson is Faithful uh, Man in Generosity. Woo! And what we're going to do today is look at the parable of the Good Samaritan. And... Many of you know that a parable is a story that's told alongside uh, a, 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 you know, a physical story with a, a spiritual application to it. And so I love when, when uh, our, our preachers, our evangelists, uh, I'm not a movie buff, so I'm not really good at that, but when they could get a movie like Rocky, like Tyler Sives does, and really give a spiritual application to it, that's like a modern day parable. And, um, you know, I was really moved by that one scene um, there with Rocky talking to his son. And we're going to just read uh, by uh, this parable. I don't have time to read it and then go over it. We're just going to read it and go over it. Amen. Are you with me? So Come, on, bro. Come, Come on, bro. Come on, Daisy. Luke Risky, chapter bro. 10. Come on, Somebody bro. Somebody wants to write that down in the, in the chat. Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. And the first two verses of that parable say... On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? And you know, when we get this expert of the law, some translations call it lawyer, but it really is somebody in Israel, a leader that was really an expert in the Bible. And they knew the Bible backwards and forwards. Uh, they knew it like the back of their hand, as the saying goes. 
And he asked a question here, and it's the same where it says here, where it stood up to test Jesus. It's the same word that's used when Satan tempts Jesus in the wilderness. So this wasn't a really friendly conversation. He actually stood up to challenge Jesus. And that's never a good thing. And that's one of the things that we should learn from this parable. It's never a good thing to challenge Jesus. But what Jesus did and what we can learn from him is that he directs them to the word of God. He directs them to the Bible. And that's really where we should direct anyone who comes to us that wants to know anything about God. Whether it's somebody who's just finding out about God or whether it's ourselves already as saved disciples. We need to point people to the word of God. And Jesus said, hey, what does the Bible say? And he gives the answer here. It's just like, uh, for example, you know, it's a, it's a noble question, right? What do I need to do to inherit eternal life? It's like the Israelites in Acts chapter 2 and verse 37 through 8, when they said, what do I need to do to be saved? And, you know, they gave the answer there in Acts chapter 2, verse 37 through 38. Repent, become a disciple, get baptized for the forgiveness of your sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit right? That's what you need to do to be saved. Oh, John. Answers here in verse 27, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. And if you have a Bible, it's going to tell you that, that those commands are found in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 5 and Leviticus 19 and verse 8. And if you read commentaries, you'll see guys that say that they have uh, multiplied the number or counted up the number of commands that there are in the Old Testament. There are 613 commands. And the Israelites summed them all up in the Ten Commandments. And you can sum up uh, the first half of the Ten Commandments, the loving God, and then the other half of loving your neighbor as yourself, your relationship with other people. And then they narrowed them down to two. Those are the two that we just repeated here. Love, love God with all your might, heart, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And, you know, the Jews that felt that they could do that, they felt pretty good about themselves. They narrowed 613 commands into these two. And Jesus said, you know, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. We kind of missed the sense here of what this means because it means do this always, do this continually. I'm wrong. Time's up already. Well, amen. I barely got to there. Let's read the parable, guys, if my time's up. Come on, bro. Uh, okay, here Come you on, go. Bro. Let's go Come to on, verse 28, 29, 30, and 31. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? And replied, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. When he was attacked by robbers, they stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and we saw the man. He passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and, had, and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took his own two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I'll reimburse you for an extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him, Jesus told him, Good, do and, and go likewise. Look, I'm going to focus on just one thing here, guys, since my time. And that is the compassion that this good Samaritan had. And it comes from the Greek word splachnon. Whoa. You can really say that Whoa. for your gut, but it's feeling a little oh. compassion from deep down in your gut. And it's really only the level of compassion you can feel when you've been touched by forgiveness yourself and by the grace of God. And all the guys, and we've all talked about that today. And this Samaritan, really, in the allegory, is like Jesus. And we see Jesus being a man who is full of love and full of compassion. And if we are really going to be men who are, who are just full of faith and full of generosity, we have to be men who are full of compassion from deep down under. We have to feel the lostness of the world. I'm we wrong. 
remember where we came from, like Matt Rodriguez said, remember our own darkness, our own sin, and let that have the, from the depths of gratitude, have us to be uh, generous men. Amen. To God be all the glory. Amen. Come on, Jay Z. Amen. 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 Wow. Come on, Chris. Yeah, come on, Chris. Go, Chris. Go, Chris. Go, Chris. Go, Chris. Go, Chris. Go, Chris. Come on, bro. Let's go, Chris. Let's go. Dude, Let's go, Chris. Chris. I was given the charge today to um, to do faithful man in brotherly love. Come on, bro. Um, let's go to the most famous love scripture, 1 Corinthians 13. Preach. Come on, Chris. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but I do not love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries, and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but I do not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to, to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but I do not love, I've gained nothing. You know, and it goes and say, love is patient, love is kind, and it lists all these different characteristics of love that we're very familiar with. You know, and this is an awesome scripture, right? But the thing about it is like, there's not an example here. Sometimes we just don't understand exactly what it means in a practical way to love people. So since it's a man's meeting, since it's a man's forum, you know, I want to go ahead and do it the caveman style way. You know, we're gonna nice. go to David. Let's go, come on, bro. Let's go bro. In the cave of Adalem. Let's go over there, and I'm gonna show you a different Let's go, cave. of how cave David man. Come on. Let's go. Uh, first Samuel 22, one to two. David left, uh, left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adalem. When his brother and his father's household heard about it, they went down to him there. All those who were in distress or in debt or in debt or discontented gathered around him and he became their commander about 400 men were with him you know you know this is um you know my brothers you know this is you know love in action you know it's hard enough to be around one guy who is discontented you know just imagine being around 400 Ooh. you know and david became the leader Oh, yeah, you that's know, powerful. was a sacrificial leader, you know, so, you know, this was a burden, this was stress, you know, you know, if this is love right here, you know, this is love in action, you know, um, you know, David, um, you know, David himself, David could have stay, he could have stayed in that cave by himself. Right, he could he he could have just stayed there, you know. And it's a negative thing, right? When people say, "Wow, you know, um, that that person lives in a cave," right? Yeah. But you know what? He decided not to do that. He decided, you know, I'm not going to stay here and get myself into sin. No, this is a very stressful time for for David, right? Probably the most stressful time in his life. Maybe the most. This is a time where he could just focus on himself, but Come he on, decided Chris. not to do that. Right, he decides to bring other people in the cave with him. You know, if you can't really think about a cave, right? Come on, bro. There's really nothing much you could do in a cave, right? There's no couch, there's no 65 inch big screen TV, no Xbox. It's just a boring place, right? But when you have people that you can focus, that you can give your heart and mind, you know, that's what it means to love. In, in, in a time when life could be the hardest for you, you know, David decided. To, to look at others who was in the same situation and be able to be outward focused, to be able to, to give his heart and his mind, to be able to like, you know, you know, help these guys out of the situation. You know, um, you know, David was an awesome king, right? He led Israel for 40 years and he built one of the greatest kingdom ever in the, in the Old Testament. You know, and um, you know, how did he, how did he do this, right? You know, we, we learn about these same guys who was discontented, in debt, and after some time, they became the mighty men of God, yeah. who did amazing things for God and his people. Oh, you know, and um, you know, there was, um, you Good know, stuff, one guy would take on a whole army by himself, you know, 
when another guy went down to the pit and kill, kill, killing a, a lion with his bare hands, right? And um, you know, these guys became from, from, from guttermost to uttermost. They became people that, that um, you know, that you would look and be like, wow, this is, these are some awesome men, you know? And, um, but you know, it didn't start it off that way, you know? And um, so, you know, I, I have a few, um, few things that I want us to think about, you know, as far as, you know, how do we love, how do we love our brothers? You know, because oh, you know, we, we sometimes grow up with a, with a certain, you know, thinking about love, you know, and it's not something we taught the way, you know, growing up and the examples we see is something that we have to learn. And I know for me Very throughout true, the years, you know, I had to learn how to love other people, uh, how to love disciples. So I got a few things here that I, I would like to challenge us with. Help me um, out, bro. You know, bro. you know, Come on, first Chris. question is Talk uh, to me, Chris. the physical needs and emotional needs of our weaker brothers, right? You know, it's, um, you know, when someone has physical needs, when they're in debt, when they're distressed, when they're weak, you know, when they have no vision, you know, you have to go down there and meet them, like the way Jesus, uh, the, the way David did. You know, you can't just go and help, you know, uh, make them into someone who is like, you know, who's gonna change the world. You have to get down to them, their level, the way, the way David did, and be able to build them up, to be able to, to, to give them that vision. You know, you know, um, you know helping, helping our brothers is not something we do you know, we, that's what we put on our schedule. It's something that we do 24 seven, you, know, um, you know, we have to study. Good point. We have to study people. We have to study our brothers to really understand, you know, to really understand like their needs, Come right? On, bro. In order to be effective, to help them, you know, we can't have the cookie cutter, you know, discipling time with them and the cookie cutter, like, you know, I'm just gonna do this for everybody. We have to build them up according to their needs. Right, so um, you know, so it's you know Ephesians four twenty nine, building people up according to their needs. Yeah, you know, and that takes a lot of putting your side, putting you know, getting getting advice, you know, putting in what you know, and really focusing on what they need at, at the moment. You know, um, I'm wrong. Also, um, you know, I think we sometimes need to ask ourselves, you know. Um, you know, are we people who just want to be around the elite and strong, you know, in the kingdom? And we don't want to find ourselves with the, with the guys who really need help, Come but on, the people bro. who are not popular. You know, I think that, um, I think we have to, um, you know, get out of that attitude because, you know, God looks at everybody equally. And sometimes, you know, when we look at the people who are, who are weak and we help them, you know, we see the power of God. You know, we, we, we see the power when, when someone who is like faithless and who is down, you know, we can't kind of help them to become the people that we, you know, God wants them to be, like the way David did it. Then that yeah. builds our faith. It builds the kingdom. And it also causes people to stay in the church and not to fall away. You know, um, bro. You know the thing, thing about it is, um, you know, there's some people, you know, who, who are not weak. There's some people who are just floating around but they don't have vision, they don't have dreams, you know, and we have to be able to give those people vision and dreams. I think, you know, it, I, I, I think if David had just helped them with their debts and helped them to be content, maybe have a family, you know, that would not be inspiring. You know, that by itself is not, not inspiring. We have to be able to like, you know, get people to the point where we, we give them vision. You know, we help them to understand what it needs to have, uh, for them to have a vision for God. Because if people are not truly happy, you know, unless they have a vision, unless they have dreams, unless they, became, um, unless they become uh, revolutionary for God, they're not truly happy un unless you get to that point. Come on, bro. You know? And the thing about it is, like, that's what, you know, we, as, as disciples, this is how we need to look at each other. I believe, like, I believe that, you know, inside of every man's heart, there is something you know, I, I believe that God put that 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 uh, dream or that that gene, I should say, to be able to change the world. Unless someone is really, you know, unless the desire is to change the world for God or to change the world in some way, 
you know, you know that you're not doing what's, what you're supposed to do. So I believe like love is, is that. It's like, you know, burly love is, is not just getting people to a point where they're dissatisfied, but getting them to the point where they, they want to do something awesome for God, you know, just like the mighty men. You know, um, you know, also, um, you know, the oh, bro, first awesome. Come on, uh, Chris. Awesome, bro. Awesome, bro. Come on, bro. Parts of the body that are weak, uh, 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 indispensable. And, and, and indispensable means totally necessary, you know? And I think that that's something that also we, we need to look at, you know? Um, when we see the weak part of, body, of the body of the church, the weak people, we need to kind of understand that, you know what? You know, it takes a lot of love from us to be able to help them to be strong. But at the same time, it builds us up. It really helps us to, to, to learn how to love. And I think very, that, very that's, true, a, you know, the mindset we oh, need bro. to have as we, as we view people in the church and, um, you know, to, as we view our brothers in the church. Now, um, you know, so with that, I just want to say, um, so let's be a faithful man who love like our awesome brother, King David. Amen. Thanks. Hey, and let's go, go Chris. 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 Uh, yeah. Chris. Yeah. What's up, Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, my brother. Oh, 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 oh man. Oh, In King of Kings. Come on, bro. Peter, chapter 5, verse 2. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve. I have one simple point for you, brothers. A faithful man understands the why, the who, and the how in oh, kingdom bro. dates. The no. why, no. it's like the scripture says, because no. you are willing as God wants you to be. Willing to protect yourself, willing to protect God's family. And, you, and if you're married, you're willing to protect your marriage. Now, the thing that's amazing here is that the why causes you to want to go ask the sisters out on a date. These sisters are getting hit on daily, my brothers. We have to make an effort to ask the sisters out on a date weekly. Come on. And I think it's embarrassing, man. Um, Come on, Earl. I hear from my wife, sisters calling her, texting her, saying, hey, are there any brothers that need encouragement? Oh, that is not okay, brothers. We've got to be the Barnabas on, in the, our ministry. We have to Come be on, encouragement. Come on, Come on, on Earl. Earl. Don't Amen. let that Call it out. come up and ask you on a date. You lead. Ask that on a date. Oh, turn me off. Now the who? Now that's the good part. God's flock that's under your care. That's what it says. Ooh. God's flock that's under your care. As brothers, we lead the sisters. We got to go on dates. We can't go on dates with the worldly women, that co-worker out there, that child friend. Yes, That's sir. Oh, going out on dates with, facts, we're going bro. out on dates with women who said Jesus is Lord. And according to Cindy Oaks' um, annual report, there's 134 in San Francisco alone. Mm. Where are we going? There's a, there's a bunch of them. Yeah, let's call EJ the third. Goal to not play favorites. Now, there's take every sister out that's in the church. She could be a teen, she could be a veteran, and she could be in between. If she ain't married and she ain't dating steady, you need to take her on a date this year. And you need to Amen, make it brother. Oh, Earl. Consider, consider we're on in a Earl. pandemic. Thank you. Take it a step further. After you date all the sisters in the church, go date all the sisters in our sector. Date all the sisters in the US. Ow. Date all the sisters internationally. Oh, Who yeah. said you had to stay in San Francisco with the sisters here? <laughs> Come, Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. LA. What you mean? Now, my married brothers, I ain't forget oh. about y'all. We about to get so it. Who for you is your wifey? All right. All right, for sure. If you want the, your wife to respect Come on. you, show her some love. Hey, Come on, Earl. Hey, show your them love. Friend. She is your, she's your wife, but she's been your girlfriend forever. My wife has been my girlfriend since 2009. And hey. I'm gonna do Come, my on, Earl. Come on, Earl. Come on, Earl. that relationship. Now the, I now go that, about it, bro. that is the, that's the who. Now the how, the how's the best. Not pursuing this honest game, but eager to serve. Amen. We don't date the sisters because we're on, on a soul intent to find a boo. Oh, amen. We, amen. we date them Ooh, them them. friendship, family, protection, encouragement, leadership, love, security, hope, Girls going in. and a mounting moving faith that a man can lead them. 
Come on, bro. Notice that you can leave my oh. plane to dates way days in advance, a week, two weeks in advance. Do do not ask the sisters two hours before the date, brothers. That is just so unloving. Come, Come on, on now. Man. And if there's kids Come involved, on, help the single mothers. Help the married that you're going on a date with. Get plans for the kids. Get childcare set up. If they're coming on a date, make sure they got that kids meal ready at the date part place. Come That's on. the one, bro. Brothers, don't. Oh, bro. And don't Talk spend your it. contribution on Come on, Earl. We have a date with the Lord on Sunday morning service. Bro. That's where that contribution is supposed to go. Have financially first. smart date. We're in a pandemic. We're, we're over COVID. It's COVID season. We're on Zoom. You could do amazing dates for free. Now, the, now here's the other thing. It was mentioned earlier, but we got to be well-groomed, brothers. We're in a Come pandemic. Come on, bro. But you don't have to look like Talk about it, bro. You do not have to look like a pandemic. Come on, Earl. Smell good, dress nicely, show the sisters you care. No good, Brothers, man. You don't gotta don't look like a pandemic. Let the day go past 10 o'clock. Do not let the day go past 10 o'clock. Those four digit hours in the late evening, they're no good for anyone. Uh, four digits is not good. Golly can come out of that. And it's amazing because if God has found favor on you, brothers, and I'm talking to the to those brothers that are dating steady, whether your name be Gary Phillips or your name be Matt Rodriguez. Shit. Oh, bro. Come on, let's go. Come on, bro. Not mess this Game up. Names. Do not go on dates one on one with Reached that sister. Him, if you're dating, the expectation in the future is marriage. As a faithful man, does not just date to date. Make every effort to go on kingdom dates with married couples. They're the ones who have had successful dating relationships. Go on mar uh, mar married dates, learn from them, and you might even get a free meal out of it. Now, my married brothers. Yes. Don't be selfish with just your wife. Go <laughs> on with these brothers and sisters. They need to learn from you. They need oh, to, yeah, be able to understand what it what marriage looks like. They need to give be given a hope, a vision, a security, and favor what marriage could look like in God's kingdom. Because what's in the world is not is not going to cut it. And so, please, my brothers, I encourage you go on a date. And if you don't remember anything that I have told you today, have fun and be grateful to the sister. Don't just go on a date and then that's it. Go give her a car, make her something. I remember the first date I did in DC with a sister, I made her a plank with that said, God's, God loves you or something like that. And it, she just loved it. Every sister was trying to go on a date with me. And so brothers, go on a date. <laughs> Come on, bro. In Come on, bro. John 10, 10 says, Come on, bro. he comes only to steal, kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. You can't have life to the full if you ain't going on some kingdom dates, my brothers. So, preach, do your own. Mm. That's it. Let's go, bro. Oh, do your own. Let's go. Do your own. Let's do it. Other sisters want to date. Ben, stop it. 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 Stop the life force of character. And so today we're going to look at the account of a king. And, and it describes this king as one of a kind. There, there's no one quite like him before his reign or after his reign, and that is King Hezekiah. And so in the time where King Hezekiah becomes king, there's prostitution, there's idol worship, there's wickedness. Every crazy thing is going on at the time when he becomes king and he turns to God. He turns away from the wickedness of the men and, and the idolatry and, and the worship that they had before him. He turns away from all of that. He removes the high places and the idol worship in Jerusalem. It says that he held fast to the Lord and whatever he did, he had success because God was with him. Come on. Hezekiah was a man of character. Yeah. And in Second Chronicles, we're going to see what this character produced in his life. On, and we bro. pick it up in Second Chronicles 29. Come on, brother. In Second Chronicles 29, Ooh. verse 1. It says, Hezekiah was 25 years old when he became king. He reigned in Jerusalem 29 years. His mother's name was Abijah, daughter of Zechariah. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father David had done. In the first month of the first year of his reign, he opened the doors of the temple of the Lord and repaired them. He brought in the priests and the Levites and assembled them in the square on the east side and said, listen to me, Levites. 
Consecrate yourselves now and consecrate the temple of the Lord, the God of your ancestors. Remove all defilement from the sanctuary. Our parents were unfaithful. They did evil in the eyes of the Lord, our God, and forsook him. They turned their faces away from the Lord's dwellings place and turned their backs on him. They also shut the doors of the portico and put out the lamps. They did not burn incense or present any burnt offerings at the sanctuary to the God of Israel. Therefore, the anger of the Lord has fallen on Judah and Jerusalem. He has made them an object of dread and horror and scorn, as you can see with your own eyes. This was our father who have fallen by the sword and why our sons and daughters and our wives are in captivity. On, now, I intend to make a covenant with the Lord, the God of Israel, so that his fierce anger will turn away from us. My sons, do not be negligent now, for the Lord has chosen you to stand before him and to serve him, to minister before him. And we see that King Hezekiah is a young man at the age of 25. He's walking with God. And because he's walking with God, he's able to call the people back to the standard of following God. Yeah. See, this character that was produced in him allowed him to have an authoritative presence and an expectation for God's people. He tells them to consecrate themselves, right? Tells them to consecrate the temple of the Lord and to not be negligent. We as men who follow God must do the same. We must consecrate ourselves. We must rid ourselves of the defilement that is in our life, setting ourselves apart from the wickedness of the world. We have to dedicate ourselves to walking with God, just like he, King Hezekiah did, right? And when we do that, we will have a force of the Holy Spirit that moves through all of us. Come on, Let's Sherman. Go, so when we walk with God, we build character. Yes. And it's a character of righteousness. Come on, Charlotte. So we don't turn from God because, you know, today got a little bit harder than yesterday. Yeah. And may, maybe we want to relieve ourselves from the suffering. Yeah. No, we got to make a decision here in 2021 to build a character of righteousness. If you haven't cleaned the cup yet this year, oh. you have not got open to your discipler. Oh. I have a challenge oh. to get open, clean the cup, get rid of the sin that defiles, get rid of the sin that destroys and sucks the life force out of you. Delete the music that makes you struggle. Oh. Delete Come the on, music on Snapchat or Instagram oh. that Come makes on. you struggle. The TV shows that cause corruption in your mind, get rid of it. Walking with God also builds a character of authority. Do things with an expectation. The faith to expect someone to Come on. have a faith in everything that you do this year, right? And this is not just for the people that we do Bible studies with, but this is also for us, right? This is also for everyone on this call and it's for me as well, right? This, this message is for me. You know, Romans 14, 23 says yeah, everything that you do, if it does not come from faith, it is sin. And Bam. I found myself in times in 2020, situations where I told myself, okay, bro, you, you just got to do it because you're the leader. You got to do it because you lead the campus. You got to do it because people are watching. But the, the sad reality was, is that God was watching the mm. faithlessness oh, in my life. Come on, Charvel. No! Let's go, Charvel. I have to work with faith versus being busy with work. Whoa. I think we can pray often wow. and then walk away totally unchanged. And so the challenge is to pray until you are convinced and resolved through your prayer. Walking with God builds a character of consistency. We have to consistently walk with God in all situations. Pray, rely on God, fix our eyes on Jesus, who is gonna be the perfecter of our faith. Amen. Right. Don't watch God just move in other people's lives. Make a decision to walk in step with the spirit that God has given you. I have a challenge to write a challenge for yourself after every quiet time that you have. Wow. Come on. 
What is God challenging you to grow in? Our character in this life is the key to changing lives, to keeping people faithful. And this will allow the spirit of power and force to move through us. Sure. My brothers, let us build the character of life force and let it radiate through our skin starting now in 2021 and for the rest of our discipleship in this lifetime. Come on, bro. Come on. Let's go. Let's go, man. Oh, fellas. Let's go, brother. Hi, Tony. Oh, Big Tony. Hey. Tony, Tony. Tony. Good afternoon, my brothers. My name is Anthony Thomas. And my charge today is faithful man in excellence. Come on. Yeah, uh, we, we heard from some incredible men here this, this afternoon. And I really hope we do take a lot right. of these Thanks. things to heart and implement them into practice. But with the virtues that these men spoke about today, yes, it will take mountain moving faith in order for us to be the powerful men of God that God has called us to be. However, it will take excellence for us to excel in these virtues. You know, excellence is defined as the quality of being outstanding or extremely good. The state, quality, or condition of excelling to do or be better than. You know, excellence comes with spiritual maturity. And spiritual maturity builds character. Come on, Anthony. Which will then result in a pursuit of excellence. You show me a man that's spiritually mature, and I'll show you a man that's excellent in everything Come that on. he does. Wow. You know, without the pursuit of excellence in our life, we remain bland. Our life was, will be super bland, vanilla, oh. super bland, super vanilla, lukewarm at best. Oh yeah, my we God. all know how God feels about lukewarmness. It's oh vomit in his eyes. No you know, I'm going to read here Philippians 4.8 for, for the sake of time. I'm just going to go through. But in Philippians 4.8, it says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. We all know that Paul was excellent in everything that he did. Throughout the, the, the first century, he was the prophet. He was the man. He changed the entire world. Paul didn't do that because he was lukewarm or average. Oh. He did that because he was excellent. He's here challenging the brothers and sisters to stand firm in these virtues. You know, we need to think about what is noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable. If anything is excellent, think about these things. Our minds should be set on excellence, not Come on. You know, the Bible on, said that we have to set our minds on things above and not er earthly things. You know, you cannot be a faithful man in any of these virtues if you are not pursuing excellence in all of these virtues. Come on. If you're wow. not excelling in everything that you do, you cannot be a faithful man. You're just an average man. You're a lukewarm man. Wow. You're a man that enjoys his own vomit. Wow. You know, here, on, Talk to him. 323, it says, whatever you do, Work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord. Ecclesiastics 9.10 says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. And Titus 2.7 says, in everything set an example by doing what is good. In your teaching, show integrity, seriousness, and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned so that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about us. Oh. Proverbs 22, 29. Do you see someone who is skilled in their work? They will serve before kings. They will not serve before officials of low rank. The oh. Bible is calling us to be excellent in every aspect of our life, both physically and spiritually, brothers. When you're excellent, you'll be treated as excellence. Oh my brothers, gosh. we have to have a moral sense. We have to have this conviction. You know, as brothers in the church, and I'm glad it's just brothers here, we can speak very frank. 
You know, on, I, I, lately I've just been hearing a lot of I can't. Man, I, can't. Out, bro. I, I can't be pure. Uh, I can't. I can't go out on dates. I can't pay my rent. I can't get a job. I can't be in the ministry. I can't lead a Bible talk. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. You can't what? Let's change that. Get that out of our vocabulary. Come Put on, it bro. As can. I can't. Come on, bro. Out, bro. Yeah. Can Come on, Anthony. Come on, bro. I'll be a Come faithful in. man for the rest of my Let's life. Go. Bro, lay it out. Frankly, when I hear that word, I'm embarrassed. Dang. Because we are, uh -oh. we are the leaders. We march forward to battle. We bring the battle to Satan. We don't sit back and wait for Satan to bring the battle to us. Mm. Come, Come on, bro. bro. If you're living lukewarm, if you're living average, you should be embarrassed. Mm. It's time to repent, brothers. Oof. It's time to be excellent. Come on. You know who's Let's really excellent? Go, bro. He does? Satan. Satan is really good at telling you, hey, you can't do it. Wow. You can't accomplish it. So true. It. Your goals are too lofty. You'll never overcome your sin. I mean, fill in the blank for what it is for you. You know, Satan is excellent at what he does, and we honestly have to be greater than him. We have to overcome him with the blood of the land and the word of our testimony. Come on, fellas. overcome him with being faithful, strong men that are striving to be excellent. You know, the greatest area of sin in a disciple's life, it, it, it's not the area of, of action, but it's the area of thought. It's, oh. Everything starts right here. It starts in your brain, and then it trickles down into sin. Wow. Right? Once you develop the thought, you're just like, oh, I, I, I could go in this direction. Oh, I could go in that direction. Let's make a, a, a point to do the right thing. You know, we are responsible for our thoughts. Second Corinthians uh, 10 says, we take captive of every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Brothers, we have to make a decision to be faithful men in excellence. It all starts with a decision. Just one decision could turn 2021 into an amazing, fruitful year for you. Uh, you know, excellence is a mindset. This is why Paul says in Philippians 4, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things and put it into practice. Again, excellence, start with your mind. I'll leave you with this. With faith, you can become a man of prayer, fruitfulness, leadership, purity, generosity, brotherly love. You can even become a dating man, and you can be forceful. But without the pursuit on, of Corn. excellence, you will not be able to sustain and excel in these areas of your life. My brothers, let's go after excellence. Let's throw yep. off everything that hinders. Let's be the men that God called us to be, and to God be all the Let's go, bro.